Hey guys, so I've got a mini reviews uh, for September. This is part two and this is going to be a three-parter. I was just going through all the videos that I did in September and I've already done a part one and I thought, oh, well, the rest I can probably cover in a part two. There's no way. So this is part two of three and we are going to start with a luxury haul that I did. The first things I talk about in this haul were the new at that time Cicely Lafito Rouge lipsticks. I have the colors 11, 33, which is Orange Sevilla, which I absolutely love, and 41. This is probably the color that I use the least, but it's such a beautiful, like, burnt red. It's definitely a red on the warmer side. Less blue in there, a little bit more orange. And so you can see I've used it, but just not very often. This is definitely one that I reach for more in the winter and the fall. But Orange Sevilla and number 11, which I can't remember the name of, but this is the nude shade that... I love, absolutely love. And then here is number 33, Orange Sevilla. That is another beauty. So this is like a very warm brownish uh, with a little hint of red in there. So I was hesitant in purchasing these lipsticks because they were marketed as having a very matte finish. And matte finishes just aren't my thing. And so I thought, oh, maybe I'll pass on them. But I was lured in by the sales associates at the counter there. And they were like, just try them on. This formula is really unique, et cetera, et cetera. And so I did, and I thought, gosh, these really do not feel like a matte lipstick at all. They go on like a cream lipstick. They don't even have that dry down where eventually, you know, after some time passes that they start to feel like a matte lipstick. Not at all. They just feel like a cream lipstick, but they have a matte appearance. So I fell for these hard, still love them, still absolutely love them. And when you guys ask me for like a matte lipstick with a really comfortable feel, this always comes to mind and I always recommend these. So these are the Sicily Lafito Rouge lipsticks. Highly, highly recommend. And then I talk about the Sicily Velvet Nourishing Cream, which is in my bathroom. So apologies for not bringing it. But this cream is amazing is absolutely amazing and this was also new at the time it was replacing their like comfort extreme cream and i had just started getting into that cream my friend natalie over at flower bomb 31 she recommended that cream to me she just said it was just so it just feels so healing on the skin so i had used up like a gazillion uh, little tubes of it, little like deluxe sample sizes of that cream. And so I finally went to the counter and said, okay, I'm ready to make this purchase. And they were like, oh, we're discontinuing it. And I was like, what? And they directed me to the Velvet Nourishing Cream, which has saffron flowers in there. And it just, it smelled great. And I love the texture of it. It's very pudding-like and I love it. It's the cream that I like to use when my skin is really, really feeling dry. It's like my day cream. And I haven't been using it lately because in the summertime, I just, I need something a little bit lighter and I moved over to the Three Lab M Cream. That one has like more of a gel texture. It feels cooling on the skin. So I've been loving that for the summertime. But the Sicily Velvet Nourishing Cream, oh, it is really, really, it's just a beautiful kind of cream. Highly, highly recommend it. Absolutely love it. All right, and next it looks like I picked up four different Tom Ford Boys and Girls lip colors. I vaguely recall him coming out with a whole bunch of new colors, uh, definitely in the girls, the white ones. The boys, I don't remember if these were new, I think so. So I got Alistair which is this nude color. Looks like I used it a couple of times. I definitely have not used this in a very long time. Donovan, which is a really warm, kind of metallic sheen terracotta shade. Really, I remember really being excited for this, but it looks like I only used it maybe once. Shame on me. And then Sonia is this really bright red sheer color. I remember using this quite a bit actually last summer. And then Ava. Oh, this one looks like I went in pretty hard with this one. Definitely use this quite a bit. Oh yeah, this one is a beautiful like nude tone with a little bit of like a gold metallic sheen to it. This one is gorgeous. Definitely my favorite out of the four. I like them all, but you guys know how many lipsticks I have. So very difficult for me to use um, any color more than a few times. But the Ava color, I remember using quite a bit and it actually being in my purse quite a bit, which you know. 
says a lot about a lipstick. And then next it looks like I haul the Chanel CC cream. I do a whole video on it later on. I really enjoyed that CC cream. As I understand it, this was a reformulation of their previous CC cream, which I didn't have any experience with. So I was kind of starting with a clean slate and I really enjoyed it. It had a little bit more coverage than I was expecting, uh, but with the SPF 50, I guess it really wasn't that much of a surprise, but that is really a lovely CC cream. I used it quite a bit. I remember when I first got it, but I haven't used it really since then, and I should definitely whip it out now that it's summertime. It's perfect time for an SPF 50. So this is another reason why I love doing these videos. It just reminds me of all the things that I got. And it's such a doesn't time fly kind of reminder too, because so many of these things, like I would never think that I've had these lipsticks for 10 months now, but here we are, 10 months later. And then next on my list is the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base in Light. And I look disgusted because I just tore apart my room looking for it. This is my favorite eyeshadow base. Uh, I don't use eyeshadow bases very often. Usually concealer is good enough for me. I just kind of powder over it and that generally kind of does the trick. But if I do want to use an eyeshadow base, this NARS one is the one that I go for. I like the tinted ones better than the original. The original was almost too much for me. I like the tinted one because it was a little bit, it had just a softer feel to it. It wasn't quite as like rubber cementy on my lids. Like it just had like a softer texture to it. And I like the fact that it was tinted too, because it would do like a nice bit of color correcting on the lids. So that I love and I'm a little bit annoyed that I can't find it right now, but I'm sure it'll turn up as soon as I'm done filming. So um, that is the NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base in Light. Uh, oh, so that's right, NARS reformulated their eyeshadows. So I got one duo and then three singles. So the duo that I got is Kalahari, and that is this beautiful duo here. And then the three singles that I got are Ashes to Ashes, which is this pretty satin shade. Uh, Tulum, which is a matte transition shade that I absolutely love. And then Stud is a hard wired shade. It's like a really high shine glittery shade that is great alone or as a top coat or like over black shadow. This is actually really, really pretty. So Tulum is definitely the shadow that I use the most. This is like one of my favorite transition shades. It's like a medium tone brown with a mustard kind of tone to it, a really warm ochre kind of feel to it. And I love it and I definitely have used this the most out of all of these. I really, really liked the previous NARS eyeshadow formula. I thought they were really nice. So when they said they were reformulating it, you know, eye roll, I was like, oh great, here we go again. But I thought they did a really good job and I actually really like this new formula a little bit more. I think it performs just a little bit better. It's a little bit more hard pressed. It feels a little bit harder in the pan, especially when you finger swatch it, you're thinking, gosh, am I gonna get any pigment out of there? But it's very pigmented. I don't find them to be very powdery. I feel like I've seen some people's comments saying that they found these to be very, very powdery. I don't, you can even see like in the packaging that there hasn't been that much kick up. Actually, let me show you Tulum because that's the one I use the most. And it's not like I wipe these down very often. So I don't find them to have a lot of kick up and I just really like this like reformulation they did. So those are the NARS shadows. All right, next up is some clay de po. I purchased their cushion foundation and I actually did two review videos on this because the first time I used this cushion, I used the Shiseido um, brush that I actually talked about in my last mini reviews, which was a total disaster because the red in the bristles actually bled and I feel like it turned this foundation a little bit deeper. So I did another full day review and I do feel like this shade is a little bit deep for my skin tone, full stop, that is a fact, but this definitely also oxidized on my skin. So I kind of put this away for a long time and you know, I just, I couldn't get past the color, the color change. Um, I don't even really remember if I like the finish that much. I think me not remembering it is actually a good sign. Like if it was bad, I think I would have remembered that. But what I'd like to do is actually use this in conjunction with the La Mer Cushion Foundation because that one I find to be just a little bit too cool and like a little ashy on my skin tone. I also don't find that one to have a lovely finish and this one has a radiant finish. So when I combine the two, I actually like the result a lot more than either of these cushions alone. So that's the Clay de Peau Radiant Cushion, but because I have to kind of mix two together, I don't reach for this or the La Mer very often. So unfortunately, but I should probably just go and get the O10 because I have the O20 shade here and it's just not right. And then I also hauled the cream blush. I have it in number four. I 
love this blush. There is something very, very beautiful about the finish of this blush, about the formula of this blush. It's one of those blushes, ignore this, we'll talk about this in a second, but this blush, it goes on really smoothly. It blends like a dream, like completely effortlessly, and it builds up. So, you know, with blush, you don't want anything too strong to begin with. So this is just like the perfect like formula. It has a great, great finish. It sets down to something kind of powdery, but because there's like a little bit if you guys can see that a little bit of like a metallic pearly finish in there it doesn't look flat it doesn't look powdery it just looks really beautiful i just absolutely love it so this is one of my all-time favorite cream blushes and then next the last thing from clay de po is i purchased their lipstick cashmere in sweet song and that is this swatch right here so you can see that it's a little bit matte and this is one of the formulas that I feel like was really popular at this time because I'm gonna talk about another one that has a similar kind of feel and texture to this. So it's supposed to have a fairly matte appearance. You can probably see that in the bullet, but it's supposed to go on really, really easily and creamy and not feel like a matte lipstick. So these, I think, I don't know, I don't have the box anymore. They just have a very strong like silicone feel. They don't feel creamy necessarily when they go on. They just feel kind of slippery. Like it just slides, it glides right across your lips. And I don't necessarily like that feeling. And then eventually it does dry down and it does start to feel very, very dry on my lips. So I'm actually not the biggest fan of these lipstick cashmeres from Clay de Poe, but I am a big fan of their lipsticks. And this is the one in bamboo. And these like look very similar. They have the same kind of like petal wave at the top of the bullet. They have the same packaging and I prefer these much more. So these are just the lipstick, not the lipstick cashmere. And this is what I have swatched right next to Sweet Song. So this is Bamboo, one of my favorite nude colors. And you can see how much creamier it is than the Sweet Song. It's just so much more comfortable on the lips. So that is the Lipstick Cashmere from Clay de Poe. And then here is Tom Ford's um, Lip Color Satin in La Nudite, number two. And this is the other lipstick that I found to be very, very similar to that Lipstick Cashmere from Clay de Poe. It's supposed to have a matte finish, but it's supposed to go on really, really comfortably and stay comfortable and not feel like a matte. But I had the same experience. It just kind of slip slided onto my lips. It had a really strong silicone feel. And eventually I felt like it did dry down and did eventually start to make my lips feel really, really dry. And this is in direct contrast to the Cicely Lafitte Rouge that I just spoke about earlier. They just go on um, very creamy and they don't have that kind of slippery silicone feel. So I prefer, personally prefer, the Cicely formula over either of those two that I just mentioned. And then the last thing I mention in this haul is the Bobbi Brown Camo Lux Eye and Cheek Palette. Now, I was really excited for this. I think the packaging really got me. I'm a big fan of camo, and I just thought that looked really cool. And it is actually very weighty. It feels very nice in the hand. These eyeshadows were not great. I thought that they didn't blend very well. I thought that they were really dry and patchy. They just didn't work for me, so that was a little bit of a disappointment. But the highlighter in here was actually really, really beautiful. It's a little bit too warm for me. Let me just give you a little swatch. See how it's a little bit too warm for me? It's almost like a blush topper, but it's not sheer enough. It's actually very, very pigmented. So this unfortunately is just a palette that I never ever reach for. And it was limited edition, so you can't get it anyway. I think I actually saw this pop up at our um, Estee Lauder, the cosmetics company store. I think I saw that there. So if you have one near you and you are interested in this, I think you may be able to find it there. So that is the last thing I mentioned in this haul. Okay, so next I do a Pillow Talk, a Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk collection video. Uh, and that's when she came out with the Pillow Talk quad and the Pillow Talk blush. And I think she already had the Pillow Talk uh, lip liner and the lipstick. Um, so let's start there. The lip liner is great. It's a great like neutral kind of pinky color. It's a little bit on the lighter side for me. I prefer her iconic nude and her love trap lip cheats. Those are probably the two colors that I reach for the most. But Pillow Talk is lovely, especially if you have the Pillow Talk lipstick. Now the Pillow Talk lipstick I got because I just knew I was gonna love this color, but this is in her Matte Revolution formula. And I'm just not the biggest fan of a matte lipstick. So here, I'll just swatch it for you. 
they're very creamy and as far as matte lipsticks go i think the charlotte tilbury formula is great but they're matte lipsticks so they do eventually end up feeling a little bit dry on my lips and so i just don't reach for them that often and that's been the case for this pillow talk lipstick unfortunately the pillow talk quad is absolutely lovely it's gorgeous i just don't think it appears the way it appears in the pans i thought this was going to be a really pinky kind of taupey uh, neutral kind of uh, quad and it actually ends up being very very warm on my eyes and I, it could be my pH I could be changing up the colors um, or it just could be an undertone in these shades that you can't really see in the pan so I don't really reach for this one that often because I feel like these two also there just isn't enough of a contrast and I know since this release and like the big kind of like buzz has kind of died down a lot of people have been asking me well do you prefer the pillow talk quad or the exaggerized quad and I actually like the exaggerized quad a little bit more and so I pulled it out just so I can show you guys but this one for me is what I was expecting when I looked at the Pillow Talk quad. It's just a little bit more neutral and I feel like the shade differences are enough so that I can get a nice dimensional look just out of these four shades. So I really like the Exaggerized quad. This is the one that I reach for probably the most out of her quads. This one and Golden Goddess. This is actually the first quad I ever got from Charlotte Tilbury. And this is definitely like up there. I just loved it. This was the first quad that really like caught my eye. So anyway, those are the two that I would suggest if you're looking for a more neutral eye. But this one just ends up being very kind of peachy on my lids and I was expecting something more pinky. So anyway, that is the Pillow Talk quad. But my favorite thing out of all of the Pillow Talk products um, is the Pillow Talk blush. This blush is so, so beautiful. This appears the way it looks in the pan. It does have a very nice neutral tone to it and it's just gorgeous, especially in the summertime, which actually reminds me I need to take this out and use it more. And then usually with her blushes, she has like a darker color in the center, which is supposed to be like the pop color. But here, and actually I think that she calls it something different. Oh yeah, this is the Swish and Glow blusher instead of the Swish and Pop blusher. So this is a nice highlight in the center here. Really beautiful kind of champagne color. So I love this blush. This for me was definitely the winner out of all of the Pillow Talk products. And then the Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction Palette. This is just, I mean, epic. Love this palette. This is definitely one of my favorite, favorite, favorite Pat McGrath palettes. This one and the Mothership one are the two that I reach for the most. I am just completely a sucker for this red punchy shade in here. It's so beautiful and the formula, it's like a baked formula, so it just goes on in this sheer kind of way, it, but it's still really pigmented. Anyway, I've talked about this palette a lot and how much I love it, so we'll just we'll just stop there. And then I talked about, oh, and then I talked about these um, Christian Louboutin uh, liquid eyeshadows. So they're okay. I actually ended up getting a lot more of the shimmer shades um, and I think I actually like the matte shades more and I just never got around to getting any more. So this one, so this is the one matte shade that I got and actually this whole thing broke off, which is very annoying to me. And it has dried out a little bit, the actual eyeshadow. So here is the one matte shade that I got and that I've actually used quite a few times, maybe that's why it's broken. But the metal ones, I've only used maybe once or twice. I didn't like the applicator in here, so I would just kind of dab it on my eyelids and then I would use a brush and kind of spread it around. But all the colors that I got are very bold. This whole packaging situation is great for an all over shade, which is probably why I like this one the best. So anyway, the formula is okay and they do set down and they are very beautiful on lids. I just think I got the wrong shades for how I normally like to use liquid eyeshadows. And then next I talk about the Natasha Denona Safari palette. So I, I like this palette. I like this palette a lot. And I remember being so excited for this palette to come out. We were, I mean, we were all excited. Like, oh my God, Natasha Denona, all matte palette. Like we were all chomping at the bit for this palette to come out. And it did not disappoint for me. I really, really enjoy it. I feel like it has all the shades that I need to create a look, but it's also the perfect like fill in the gap kind of palette for a lot of other palettes that I have if it's missing like matte shades. So, you know, the basic kind of like 
lay down all over my lid kind of colors. And then I've got some great transition shades like this one, this one, this one, and this one. These are all um, really interesting transition shades for me. They all work. This one is probably the most traditional, but this is a little bit orange, a little bit yellow, a little bit green, but they all work kind of depending on what kind of look you're going for. And they all worked really beautifully for me. So I love this palette and I hope she kind of comes out with more all matte palettes because I think, um, you know, when Natasha Denona kind of dreams up a color story, it's always a little bit different. So I really enjoy this palette. This is a good one. Okay. And the last product we're going to be talking about today is a limited edition product. It is no longer available. And this could be one of those limited edition products not being available situations that makes me so angry. So this is probably my favorite product from this brand. It is probably close to my favorite product in its category. And that is the Hourglass Unlocked Edit Palette. Why? Why is this not just a permanent part of the collection? This is the most beautiful, beautiful face palette I have ever come across from Hourglass. They usually do an ambient lighting edit palette every year around the holidays and I enjoy them, um, but I usually only enjoy maybe two out of the six products or I find them a little bit redundant or, you know, they're okay. I can use the whole palette, but it doesn't really knock my socks off. This one is mm, just beautiful. I love these two blushes. Absolutely stunning. This highlighter is out of control. It is so, so beautiful. It's the same formula as the one they came out with in the three pan. And I feel like they just need to come out with a range of them and they haven't. And every time they come out with a new release, I'm like, where are those highlighters? Why don't you just give us those highlighters? But no, they've come out with eyeshadows. They've come out with eyebrow products. I, they just need to come out with this highlighter, full range of them. They need to just re-release this palette, this exact palette, no changing up of anything. Like all of this is so beautiful. This is a great subtle highlight. These are great bronzers for my skin tone. This was the best hourglass product I think I have ever come across. And I try not to make a habit of using limited edition products on my channel. I know so many of you say it's okay. A lot of us have it or whatever, but there's a lot of you out there that also get real salty <laughs> when I use something that you can't use, which I totally understand. So I traveled with this a lot. It doesn't even look used that much, but I traveled with this a lot. This is what I just constantly threw in my bag after I purchased this because I remember traveling through January with this guy. Love it. Hourglass, if you're watching, can we just, can we just, can we just make this happen again? Like, just bring this back. So that is it for this mini reviews, uh, September 2018, part two of three. I thought I was catching up until I ran into a month where I had to do three parts. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.